Hello everyone. Welcome to this RSET training on monitoring coastal and estuarine water quality using remote sensing and in situ data. My name is Amita Mehta and this training is conducted with the help of my colleagues Sean McCartney and Juan Torres Paris from RSET. So before we go through the training objectives, let's look at these acronyms here that we will be using again and again throughout this training. CBAS, it's an in-situ data portal, which stands for CWIFS Bio-Optical Archive and Storage System, where CWIFS stands for Sea Viewing Wide Field of View Sensor, which was one of the earlier satellites uh, to monitor ocean colors. MODIS is Moderate Resolution Imaging Spectroradiometer, it's a sensor. VIRS also is a sensor, Visible Infrared Imaging Radiometer Suite. And CDAS, it's a software which is CWIFS data analysis system. So with that, the objectives are given here. We will learn to select in situ water quality data from CBAS. We'll use the CBAS data to validate chlorophyll A data derived from MODIS and WIRS imagery using CDAS and these in situ measurements. And then prepare your own in situ data to use along with satellite images in CDAS for algorithm development. And finally, validate and derive water quality parameters for a selected coastal and estuarine region. This will be the case study that we'll be presenting. Also note that we will be focusing mainly on chlorophyll A concentration here, but this methodology can be used for other parameters as well. So there are several prerequisites for this webinar. Fundamentals of Remote Sensing, Session 2C, available at this link, has general background about remote sensing, satellites and sensors useful for water resources. More importantly, a couple of months ago, RSET conducted a training on monitoring coastal and estuarine water quality, uh, focusing on transitioning from MODIS to WIRS. In this webinar, we demonstrated how to download MODIS and WIRS data for a particular uh, coastal or and region and how, how to use those images in CDAS to process and get water quality parameters. So we assume that either you attended this training or at least you have gone through the material so that you can follow the steps that we are going to go through in the current training. Also, uh, we need CDAS installed on our computers. Uh, in this training, we will go through some exercises um, on, and you will be conducting that on your own computer using CDAS. In CDAS, we will do image processing for MODIS and VIRS and also use CBAS in situ data. So please make sure that you have CDAS installed on your computer. There will be two sessions, two hours each, today and then 7th of December. Both these sessions will be repeated twice in the sense that this afternoon also this session will be repeated and same next week. In addition to English, uh, all the training materials are available in Spanish also and can be downloaded from the website. Today we will focus on CBAS data portal and how to acquire in situ data for a region of interest and also acquire remote sensing data for the same region. So we will work on that part and then we will see how to get these data into CDAS. That is for today. And then next week, we will use this data that we download today. We will first derive watch quality parameters from MODIS and VIRS and compare with in situ data. That tells us whether we, if um, you know, the validate remote sensing data or how to adjust remote sensing data based on uh, in situ data. So that will be next week. Here's the outline for today. We'll start with an overview or brief introduction to RSET. Uh, we'll have review of water quality monitoring using remote sensing. Then we will have an overview of CBAS portal and how to get in situ data. And then we will have a demonstration. I will use coastal Gulf of Mexico as a case, case study. And what I will show is how to get CBAS into the in situ data for Gulf of Mexico. 
and also get Morris and Weir's data for the same region. Then we will also look at some independent in situ data that we can use to validate satellite data. And finally, after the demonstration, there will be a lab time for all of you to work on exercise one. This exercise is available from the website and also from this meeting um, website. You can download that. There is step-by-step -step instruction given for uh, working on a case study. Again, we will focus on Gulf of Mexico, but you can also do that for region of your interest. There will be one homework assignment that will be given on December 7th at the end of the webinar series. And the homework will be due on January 5th, 2022. Uh, the answers of this homework must be submitted via Google form, which will be accessed from the RSET website. And also RSET email address will be available where you will be submitting part of your homework. A certificate of completion will be awarded to those who attend both live webinars and complete exercise. Also complete the homework assignment by the deadline. And then you will receive a certificate approximately two months after the completion of the course and it will be uh, given to you by or sent to you by email by Marinus Martins. So we'll start with introduction to RSET. Applied Remote Sensing Training Program or RSET, it provides accessible, relevant and cost-free training on remote sensing satellites, sensors, methods and tools. And our trainings are online and in person, although uh, currently we are doing all of them online because of the COVID, not, no, not in person. Um, they're open to anyone. Uh, live instructor-led trainings are available as well as self-guided trainings through our website are available. All trainings we do are always available through our website. So later on also they can be reviewed. They're tailored to those with a range of experience in remote sensing from introductory to advanced. And these are the themes in which RSET offers trainings. For more information, please visit the website. Next, we will have a brief review of water quality monitoring using remote sensing. We have covered this earlier in our introductory webinar, so we will not go through all of this in great detail, but here is just to remind you what we covered and to see what we're going to use in this webinar. So this table provides a list of satellites currently flying, which are useful for water quality monitoring. And these are the sensors flying on these satellites with this special and temporal resolution listed in this column. So here we know that Landsat missions uh, are there uh, with high resolution measurements. But we are going to focus on Terra and Aqua and SNPP and GPSS. So these two satellites, Terra and Aqua, they have MODIS flying on them. And SNPP and GPSS has VIRS flying on these two satellites. And then there are these European satellites, Sentinel-2 and 3. Um, both have a couple of satellites. We are going to focus on MODIS and VIRS because though they have moderate special resolution compared to say Landsat or Sentinel-2, they have much broader uh, swath width and one to two day revisit time. So they have good near daily global coverage of observations. So this is what we are using. In this list, we see the temporal coverage for each of the missions. Of course, Landsat is a long flying mission. Um, Terra and Aqua combined also uh, have observations available since 1999. So MODIS has long time series. And as Terra and Aqua and MODIS, they come near to the end of their mission, uh, VIRS will take over and continue the time series. So SNPP and GPSS will continue these measurements. We saw in earlier webinar that VIRS has very similar characteristics to MODIS, both spectrally and spatially and temporally. And so that is why we are going to focus on these two sensors. So uh, a long time series can be constructed 
from historical and current MODIS data and REARS data, that which will also continue in future. In the last webinar, we also talked about levels of data. Here is just a reminder. Level 1A data are unprocessed instrumental data. They are at full resolution, uh, they're time referenced and also geolocated. But 1B data are then uh, radiometrically calibrated, so they are radiances, and they are also at full resolution. And they are used to derive level 2 data, which are geophysical variables at the same resolution it's, as the source. And geophysical variables such as chlorophyll A, sea surface temperature, uh, color dissolved organic matter, etc. Based on level 2 data, level 3 data are derived which are either aggregated or projected onto a well-defined special grid over a well-defined time period. So these are further processed and usually they have lower resolution than level 1 and 2. In this webinar, we will focus on level 1 and 2 data. Actually, satellite sensor, they measure top of atmosphere radiances. When they fly over a water body, uh, top of atmosphere radiances, they have contribution from surface as well as atmosphere, including clouds and aerosol particles in the atmosphere. As you can see, if this is the top of atmosphere radiance in this wavelength range from visible to near infrared infrared range. The contribution is largest from the atmosphere, then surface, and here is the water living uh, reflectance, and that depends on backscattering and absorption of radiation um, due to water, sediments in the water, phyto phytoplanktons, and sedum in the water. So if we know what the water living reflectances are, then we can infer these parameters from the radiances. So that is the principle that um, remote sensing of water quality uses. If you look at a satellite picture, usually um, they, uh, different parameters affect different wavelengths or different colors. And so greenish bluish is chlorophyll, blue is water, uh, this grayish is non-algal particles or sediments, and CDOM, which is this brownish bluish kind of uh, signature here. And that comes from their signature in different spectral bands. So this is sediments, which is mostly in uh, red part, water is blue, CDOM is this um, grayish, mostly here in, in, in 400 to 600 nanometer, and chlorophyll here, al almost 400 to 700 nanometer range, um, picking here in green. So different constituents in the water, they affect color differently, and that is what satellite measures. Now for quantitative derivation of these parameters, here is a flow chart. Okay. And we have gone through this earlier. So let's see, what we need is satellite top of atmospheric reflectance over water body, which are atmospherically corrected to get water living re reflectances. We also need in situ observations of water quality parameters which are co-located with satellite data in space and time so that they can be matched and used to develop statistical or empirical algorithm. So based on satellite data and in situ data. And these are past observations. Based on that, um, this is done. And as we saw earlier, NASA Ocean Biology Group uh, they have algorithms, they have developed these algorithms based on satellite and in situ data. And these coefficients are then used for near real time satellite data, which are atmospherically corrected. And then these coefficients are applied to get water quality parameters. So this is the overall flow chart. What we are going to do is look at uh, these two components and also this. So um, if, if, if you look at MODIS and VIRS processing algorithms, we reviewed them in our last webinar. Uh, so ocean color algorithms 
They derive level 2 water leaving remote sensing deflectance co located with in situ measurements to develop algorithms and to derive quantitative water quality parameters. And here are the links for the uh, algorithms they were developed and used, they are currently used by the um, Ocean Color uh, Group at NASA. So, what we are going to do is look at uh, MODIS and WEIRS images, look at in situ data from CBAS. We're going to use both of them in CEDA software and then validate uh, water quality parameters derived from MODIS and WEIRS using CBAS data and see how they compare and can we modify the algorithm uh, to match the two, of the two different measurements. And we'll do that using CDAS and OCSSW. So this is what we're going to do in this webinar. Overall requirements for algorithm development here is that we need to know which geographical region we want to focus on because different estuaries and coastal regions have different characteristics because of watershed processes um, around that region or terrain uh, or land uh, use pattern or uh, what kind of um, land cover is there and uh, also um, in situ water quality parameters are uh, measurements are needed which are specially and temporally co-located with satellite overpass so that algorithm can be developed by matching them. More, most importantly that for development of algorithm uh, spectral water reflectances are required and for that cloud-free scenes are uh, absolutely necessary. If there are clouds present, then satellite sensors will not be able to see the water surface. Seasonal to annual coverage of in situ and satellite data are preferable because the water quality changes with time because of rainfall, because of runoff and sediments and nutrients going in the water. So that usually has a seasonal to annual cycle. And so if we have long term coverage of in situ measurements and satellite data, then a better, more accurate algorithm can be derived. So analysis and statistical algorithm coefficient derivation from the in situ and remote sensing observations, they have to be done. Um, and then there have to be independent in situ data for validation of this algorithm. So this is all ideal for and the requirements for algorithm development. This has been done by the NASA Ocean Biology Group uh, for different satellites using CBAS data. And so that's what we want to review uh, next, uh, in situ data from CBAS. So about CBAS, here is the link with a lot of details about this program. Uh, so OBPG, uh, it maintains a repository of in situ oceanographic data to support satellite data validation. Um, it was originally developed during CVIF period to develop algorithms. So all the in-situ data were um, obtained, algorithms were developed, calibrated, and validation activities were conducted. Um, CBAS data include measurements of inherent optical properties, phytoplankton pigment concentrations, and other data sets such as water temperature, salinity, uh, stimulated fluorescence and aerosol optical depth. This is more for atmospheric correction. Data are collected using a variety of platforms including ship and moorings and different instrument packages including profilers, buoys and handheld instruments. So CBAS data uh, can be obtained through this website and we are going to have a short demonstration of that also. Not only that, uh, if you have your own in situ measurements and if you want to contribute to CBAS so that uh, other people can use it for validation, you can do so too. One thing to note here is that CBAS data have to be in a specific file format and we will review that in shortly. So here is the get data. That's the part we are going to review in our demonstration, how to get CBAS data. So if you, in your own region of interest, you can search for a file 
and download data. There are multiple options here. There is time series tool, there is SSD search, there is validation search for different regions. We will look at the file search so that you can pick a geographical region and see how many in situ data are available there. Then there is contribution of data. You can review that if you want to submit data. Uh, important thing to note here is the file format. Uh, the in situ data have to be in uh, text uh, ASCII file format and they have to have a name that ends in .sb for CBAS or it has to be a text file .txt. This is required. So data files, they have header and they have columns of measurements here. So usually it starts with begin header and ends with end header, begin underscore header and underscore header. And then you can have a number of parameters here. Uh, you can have investigator's name, you can have affiliation, email address, experiment, if there is cruise, which kind of data. Uh, these are the northern and southern latitude and eastern and western latitude longitude boundaries of the region where in situ data are taken. Missing data value, there is water depth that can be specified or it's not applicable, then you can say NA. Um, there are several parameters you can specify. These are optional, but delimiter is, is mandatory. In here, it says how the data are delimited. It's here it says comma, but you can have a space, then you have blank in between, or you can say tab, and then there are tab delimited data. This is very important. Also important is fields, where you have what is in this column. So it's station, uh, there is latitude, longitude, this is time of observations, depth, and then there is uh, CHL or chlorophyll and units for each of these. Station has no units, so none. Latitude, longitude in degrees, time, hour, minute, second, depth in meter and chlorophyll in milligrams per meter cube. So header describes what's in these columns and then data are actually just listed in lines uh, delimited by this delimiter. So this is in situ measurement, this is header. Uh, important to note is that once you put this in situ data into this format, then CDAS can read CBAS file. So that is also important to keep in mind that we're going to use CBAS into CDAS along with satellite data. So, so let's look at the CBAS website to search and download in situ data which we can use along with uh, satellite data to validate or develop algorithm later on. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we'll look at a case study of Gulf of Mexico. So what we're going to do is go to CBAS website and select the region of Gulf of Mexico, then select temporal range for which we're looking for in situ data. Uh, we will download CBAS files and view the format more importantly, we're going to look at this site. It's Gulf of Mexico Coastal Ocean Observing System or GCOOS. And this has independent measurements, independent of CBAS. Uh, there are cruises going on and, and data taken in Gulf of Mexico uh, by this program. So we'll look at those data, download selected files and prepare GCOOS data into CBAS format so that both CBAS and GQs data can be read into CDAS and can be uh, used along with the satellite um, image process data. So that's what we'll look at next. And once we're done with that, we will also look at um, MODIS and VIRS data. So let's start with CDAS first. I'm going to go to the CBAS uh, website here. Uh, this is the website we just saw in the presentation. Here's the get data uh, link. Um, I encourage you to search this site. There's so much information so you can explore and see uh, what different 
where you can download data by cruises, by experiments, by investigators, different fields. Bulk download is available, SST, time series, uh, validation search for a particular region. We're going to focus on Gulf of Mexico. So any region you want to look at, file search is the link you would click on. And here is the uh, range uh, for which measured between these dates and archived between these dates. So we can start ideally with MODIS, so it's 2000. Um, but let, since we want to look at both MODIS and VIRS, let's start with 2012 when, because VIRS on SNPP was launched in, in 2011. So I'm gonna start with pick years for in-situ measurements which are uh, starting from January 1st uh, 2012 to current and same here so this is the temporal range and here we can if we know the exact latitude longitude we can enter um, south north west east uh, coordinates or you can just draw approximate box which is what I'm going to do here in Gulf, roughly covers Gulf of Mexico so I'm just going to do that and here are the coordinates used now there are other options we're going to leave that as default for now any water depth any string uh, what we're going to make sure is that we have chlorophyll in the measure in situ measurements as i mentioned we we are going to focus here in in one parameter which is chlorophyll a concentration uh, but you can do the same with say particulate carbon this is suspended particulate matter you can look at nutrients different uh, in situ parameters you can uh, for example we are just going to look at uh, chlorophyll and then you can perform file search once you do that it tells you total number of files available for this region for the selected temporal range and this is the water depth um, and then the product and here are all the files you can view more files in 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 one column and so there are 29 files and just by clicking on it you can save it in a directory which I already have done uh, I've saved several files so let's look at uh, those files let's, um, look at an example so notice that they all end in .sp and let's see if you click on one of these files you will see this begin header and there is also end header in between all the metadata uh, most importantly these are north south west and east latitude longitude uh, coordinates and uh, delimiter is space here so as you can see these columns or these numbers are separate by space uh, fields are described as year, month, day, hour, minute, second, latitude, longitude, station, depth, chlorophyll, chlorophyll, and these are uh, non-photosynthetic uh, pigmentation. So we are interested in CHL here. Uh, so here you can see the units also. This is in milligrams per meter cube. And so year, month, day, time, latitude, longitude, this is um, station, this is depth in meters, and this is chlorophyll uh, concentration in milligrams per meter cube. All these files have different uh, dates. And in your exercise, you will download a file for your own study. So this ends the CBAS uh, data search and download demonstration, and we also looked at the file format. So next, we will try and get one of these CBAS files into CDAS to get in situ data along with MODIS and VIRS images. And for the demonstration purpose, I have chosen one file, this 2C730B, etc., from CBAS that I downloaded. Here are all the metadata parameters. 
and you can see that space is the delimiter here and fields and units are given here what to note here is that there are four days of in situ data um, October November 2013 uh, the three days and then um, in 2014 April there is one day now in if you want to compare uh, this is chlorophyll data by the way so if you want to compare chlorophyll in situ data with uh, those derived from MODIS and VIRS we want to make sure that we have uh, cloud free some pixels available well where in situ data are and for that we can check um, two websites for VIRS it is uh, NOAA Ocean View and for MODIS it's NASA Worldview and here uh, in 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 Worldview you can see MODIS true color image so white uh, parts a white color shows clouds it's it's so here it's overcast more clouds here it's uh, not completely overcast this these are the year month date so 2013 26th October which is the first day where we have in situ data you can see that part of uh, Gulf of Mexico especially where the data are is is partially cloud free so we can use that date date and if if we go to November and we go to say this is 21st that's another in situ day there are more clouds um, if you go to 17 which is yet another day for in situ data um, all these parts are cloud free along the coast there are some clouds and uh, you can also check it for April 2014 now next week we will see how to look at multiple days along with satellite images but today let's just pick one day and I've picked 26th of October to view along with uh, MODIS and uh, VIRS data so again let's make sure that it, this is um, NOAA site ocean OC view uh, if you look at VIRS SNPP and if you go to 2013 uh, October 26 you can see that again this part is more or less cloud free so uh, for demonstration let's just look at 26th of October along with MODIS and VIRS um, images so what uh, we will do next is download uh, data for uh, MODIS and VIRS and for that we are going to use NASA ocean color website uh, so let's go to website and here there is data we went through this in our uh, previous webinar also go to data and and pick level 1 and 2 browser here is the calendar for different missions first thing to choose is date so let's see 2013 October and here is the calendar for that so let's pick 26th of October next here in the select one or more regions Gulf of Mexico is already given here so let's pick that uh, Gulf of Mexico and make sure that aqua modis and SNPP VIRS are selected and once you have that you can say find swath and this gives you all the swaths so A files are MODIS files and V files are VIRS files and you can see there are multiple swaths for each day so we have multiple images for uh, MODIS and VIRS for 26th of October you can simply click here and download uh, save on your computer I've already pre-saved but you can click on it and it gives you what to save we are going to save this ocean color uh, file you can also have other files this is a uh, level one files are there and um, uh, SSD and inherent optical properties are there but we are going to look at chlorophyll so ocean color file so click here and save that uh, I've already saved that so I'm not saving it but it shows exactly where you have so this is a very small part of Gulf of Mexico but for each of these swaths just click and save if you order data 
uh, you can have bulk order data and in the previous webinar we've gone through those steps so let's just have all these swaths and look at these images along with CBAS data so that's the next step now uh, I have already uh, downloaded Weirs um, and Modis swaths as shown here uh, we will open them in CDAS however since there are multiple swaths what we're going to first do is mosaic them together so we have single image for a single day for Gulf of Mexico. So for that, uh, you will go to where CDAS is saved and open CDAS. Once it opens, here is the symbol to use for mosaicing different swaps. Um, you can um, go here and IO parameters, you can say plus, and um, then you can shift and select them all. These are modis swaps. We're working with modis first and then open. So it adds all of them here. Next, what you want to do is make sure that they are in um, geographical projection and that they are uh, for variables. Once you click here, it shows different bands available in this file and we're going to look at chlorophyll A concentration and choose that and then you can run uh, before that you can go back to io parameter and say modis uh, 26 october it's 2015 mosaic uh, and you can run uh, when it completes it gives you a message so it's trying to uh, mosaic all these swaths and uh, if there are overlapping pixels, it averages uh, pixels, so it takes average pixel for that. And so once it is done, you will get this message and you will see that the mosaic appears here. You can close this. And if you go to bands, this is one band that we mosaic, chlorophyll A. You can do other reflectance and other data as well. So it opens uh, this data, chlorophyll data. Uh, mosaic for 26th of October from Modis. You can add land mask by clicking here. Um, so land mask, you can pick color, let's pick gray. Create mask. And you can see Florida here and this the eastern shore, but it puts, uh, looks better with land mask. And so here's where we have data. Here there are missing data uh, because of clouds, as we saw that um, this part was clear relatively. And so uh, this is chlorophyll A concentration from Moody's. Now, if you want to bring in CBAS data, you have to first open an image. Uh, on its own in CDAS, you will not be able to place uh, CBAS data because uh, according to coordinates, you will put the data in. So once you open the image, you can click here, go to File, Import, vector data and CBAS data. So I have saved this file, but I have saved only with 11, uh, 26th of October. And so if you click here, um, uh, so out of four days, I've just uh, selected, subsetted just for 26th of October, and then I say open, and here the data are added. You can zoom in, so click in this and zoom in, it, you can see uh, these are the points where in situ data are available. If you want to change this color or symbol, you can click, here is the vector data. Here's the file that we added. Uh, you can click here, go to layer, layer editor, uh, and then you can change this color. Let's make black um, stroke and fill data. You can, uh, and then you can pick any symbol here. It could be a cross or star or you, know, you can change. So that just a um, way to make it um, more visual. And so now we have added these data. Uh, notice that you can, when you say close all products, it says that has been modified. Do you want to save it? When you say yes, then you are saving this project. Um, in CDAS format and then you will be able to open that later. So this is CBAS data into um, MODIS Mosaic 
image. I've done the same with Veer's data. Uh, collected all three swaths for 26th of October 2013 that we downloaded from NASA Ocean Color Web and made a chlorophyll image and also added CBAS data. So here uh, you can zoom in. I just use different symbology, uh, but it's the same in situ data. So here it's MODIS. And here it's VIRS. So now you will be going through the same steps in the exercise um, using different C bus file and different dates for images just to learn this procedure. And in next session, next week, we will learn how to compare in situ and um, satellite data. Next step that we want to see is um, if we had independent data other than CBAS, suppose you had in situ data from either buoy or from uh, some ship based measurements, can you use that with MODIS and WIRS to either validate satellite data or look at um, what kind of biases are there? Or if you want to develop algorithm, can you use your own data? And so for that, uh, we are going to look at some independent data. And that is going to be from GQ. So I'm going to um, close this uh, CDAS file for now and uh, look at GQ's data for the same day, how to download that. And um, uh, then we'll again come back and put those data into um, CDAS. So uh, I'm going to uh, stop this and go to GQ's website. So here's the GQ's Gulf of Mexico Coastal Ocean Observing System site. Um, and you can read about this, uh, how data are collected, how many organizations are involved, um, and what different data sets are available, including meteorological and weather data sets um, in over Gulf of Mexico. We are interested in what quality data, especially chlorophyll A concentration. So let's go directly to data portal. For the current year, you can go to this HTTP data request and select a geographical region subsection of Gulf of Mexico and get the data. For our date, 2013, let's go to web accessible folder where past data are archived. Here you will see that uh, different options again are available. We're going to go uh, CSV by observation so we can pick chlorophyll A concentration. Also note, uh, here, all the parameters available, uh, mass concentration of chlorophyll in seawater, this is given in microgram per liter. So if you convert that to milligram per meter cube, it's the same number because one microgram is 0 0.001 milligram and one liter is 0 0.001 meter cube. So it, they are equivalent. So we are going to use the same numbers and consider that as milligram per meter cube, uh, the same as in CBAS. So we're going to go to CSV by observations 2013. You can see all the parameters are given uh, for this is January. Uh, and we will look for October of 2013. And we want mass concentration of chlorophyll for October. So we click on here. And I have already saved this file. Let's look at the file that I saved. This is GQ's October 2013. And um, here are the stations. Uh, if you see, there are several. They go by numbers here. And this latitude, longitude, so four to five stations. You will see that uh, these are a pretty high temporal resolution data every 15 um, 30 minutes they are taken uh, for entire day and we have just one image for uh, 26th of October from Modis and Veers each. Uh, this is chlorophyll concentration in microgram per liter or milligrams per meter cube. So what we are going to do is let's find first of all 26th of October which is what we are going to work with. And so we can filter this data and search for 26 time. And so here you will see 26th of October for 2013, entire day, every 15 minutes or so. We're going to pick one time, which is closest to the Aqua satellite overpass. Um, and that is 1.45 p.m. 
Um, so these data are in Greenwich Mean Time or UTC time. So if we take the difference, the closest, we are going to uh, take 2 p.m. and that is 18 uh, Z. So let's look for 18 Z data. And you can see these are the stations, 18 Z to so this is um, 2 p.m. over Gulf of Mexico. And I have saved these data in a separate file. So this is 26th of October 2013. Okay, so this is in CBAS format. So first, I saved uh, 26th data in Excel uh, file. And then I used CDAS template and created this CDAS format file so that we can read in um, CDAS. So same thing, it is header, um, begin and end, space, delimited, and there are five stations, and these are the data. If you have your own observation, like GQs, you can make a CBAS format file and work in CDAS and compare with uh, remote sensing data. So now that we have uh, this data in CBAS format, let's import it into CDAS so that we can look at uh, these data along with MODIS and VIRS. So anything other than CBAS, if you have your own data, own measurements, then you can put it in this format and just like that, you can take them, import them into CDAS. And we already have this CDAS project working on MODIS and VIRS data. We put this CBAS um, points from earlier files, if you remember. Now to put GQ's data, I've exactly done the same like we did. Go to import vector CBAS data and then imported the file, um, this GQ's 26th October uh, 2013 that we just created. And so if you turn that on and zoom out, they are... Uh, further south it's there in here uh, let's focus here and um, we can change symbology to see it better um, we can take this color so it stands out okay and here you can see these points these are GQs data so overall if you see you have CBAS data from earlier uh, file that we had and this is what we created and this is also same for VIRS here again you can do the same thing like before to see it better we can pick this color again and maybe make this circle so now you can see these are GQ's data we just put and these are CBAS data so this is this is where we're going to end today's exercise. So now you will have lab time. So let me remind you here. Um, first, when you start working with CBAS or ocean color data, you will have to log in with uh, NASA Earth Data Credentials so that you can download data. You can work on exercise one. You can start working on it. Uh, we will be online. So if you have any questions, we can help. But you must have downloaded the exercise from the website or here from the meeting site. So you, uh, you will be following exactly the same steps that we just showed. Only thing is that you will be using different data. Hello, everyone. Uh, we can start with the question and answer session now. And again, I want to thank the CDAS team members here, Daniel Knowles and Bing Yang. They have helped us with a number of questions and they are here to answer and also help uh, with some, some characteristics that we might have missed. So uh, question one is, in CBAS data available only for the US or for the whole planet? Um, I, I believe it's not just um, US global oceans are covered you can go to the map and you can also look find uh, draw over the map and see where the data are and um, if anything you want to add uh, 
to any of your opinion, please do. Uh, yeah, yeah, it would be global wherever um, wherever missions and uh, cruises are available. Great, thanks. Why is CBAS files in CBAS the data is not requested? Only time is requested. Um, no, we have requested time. We also picked temp, uh, spatial domain, and if you scroll down below the map towards the bottom of the that selection page, uh, we selected chlorophyll data to download. You can choose other data, so data can be selected. Is there an automated way to generate a CBAS file header for already structured data? So, Danny and Binyang, do you have any um, answer for that? I I believe that is a you can make a template uh, where you can provide data and make a header file. Can you repeat the question? I can't see anything. So. Oh. Yeah. Okay. I I guess so. You can click on the QA link. Um, in the chat box but the question is that can header data in cbas be generated automate can can you automate a way to generate cbas file header uh, that that i don't know that would be part of the cbas team you can certainly cu custom edit these cbas yeah. files if you have your own data but i don't know yeah. about generating these that so could, that question could be posed on the uh, forum yeah. is there is a cbas um but i'm yeah. not aware of any tools but they may have something for auto generating okay thank you Next question is, I'm currently using a Windows system. Can I still go ahead and carry out the exercise? And the answer is yes. Um, on our set website, the instruction is given both for Windows and Mac. For CDAS as well as OCSSW, it's a little involved for OCSSW, but yes, it, they work on Windows machine. Question five is about um, if values of minus nine 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 are present in the required GQS data, are these values preserved when preparing for file for CBAS? So uh, you can ignore them because you you will not be plotting them or not be using them. But if there are many missing data and you just want to keep the whole record. If you specify missing data in the header, then it knows that these are missing data and they will not be plotted. So question six is, how do I download in situ data from CBAS? We had the demonstration for that and the exercise also guides through these steps. Uh, question seven is, can you please share the link for CBAS data download? And it's shared here. Uh, it's also given in the presentation and in the exercise. The question eight says, I'm trying to install CBAS after successfully installing the CDAS. The problem is that the CDAS has failed to detect Python. Um, so CBAS is some it, you are just trying to get the file, I believe. Um, I'm not sure what you mean by install CBAS, but um, CDAS has failed to detect Python. You do need Python 3.6 or above, I believe. Right, Danny? Um, I think uh, I don't remember the the, the number. I Yes, I think that if you look at the requirement, um, you require. I think it's 3.8. Okay, 3.8. Okay. I think when they say install CBAS, they probably just mean loading the file. Yeah, that's what I, I think. Yeah. That's what. Yeah. 
So I think if you update your Python version, that might work. Um, I correct myself. We need the Python 3.6 or later. Yeah. Thank you, Pinya. Uh, are there any global product for SPMs? I believe, um, so SPM is part of the CBAS uh, data list, if you see. So best thing would be to keep the domain global and search for SPM data. And we will also check that. I'm installing the OCSSW plugin in CDAS, but it is quite complicated to install. Is there any way to walk me through the installation process in Ubuntu? I think uh, the procedure is already there, step-by-step -step, um, instruction. Uh, Selvin has put them for Windows, right, Selvin? Selvin Hudson Odoi from our team has gone through these steps and that document should be available from the website. Uh, hey, Amita, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, the instructions for that, um, mm -hmm. they are the same for Ubuntu, which is a Linux operating system as they are for Mac OS. The okay. instructions for that, I just need to go through it again. I will be posting that sometime today or tomorrow for you to be able to walk through that exercise. Okay, thank you, Salman. So yeah, I think before next week when we actually use OCSSW, you will have the instruction. Question 11, once I download the data from CBAS as a .sp file, I should open it in CDAS directly, isn't it? But it doesn't work. Am I forgetting some steps? So um, you should be able to, but if you if you tell us what the error you get, uh, one thing that um, Sean, you may want to explain. We notice that if you if you save um, text file which is not just simple text, you know, then it adds this return character, and sometimes that doesn't work. Sean, you can explain it better, maybe. Yeah, so if you're if you're saving a lot of these as, as, as text files, which is what you should be doing, or as a .sp, uh, sometimes it defaults to the uh, RTF, rich text format. And so what you wanna do is go into your system preferences, uh, depending on whatever uh, text editor that you're using, and just make sure that you change that from a rich text um, uh, font to just a, a plain vanilla text editor. And that will, uh, and that should work. Um, but if not, and what I will do is I'll repeat what Amita just said. If you are getting error messages uh, it, to help resolve or, or troubleshoot, if you will be more explicit and let us know exactly what those error messages are saying, we'll be uh, better able to assist you. All right, thanks. Great, thanks. I might be able to add to this a little. Um, you want you want to think of CDAS as a, a satellite data um, that you're loading in satellite data, and that CBAS is additional data that gets added in as a layer on top of that satellite data. So what you yes. have to do is you, you have to first load in a satellite data scene like a MODIS, and then you have to click on that, open a window probably in in, in um, that band, or at least um, be um, have selected the satellite data. So now CDAS says, okay, I have satellite data here, um, and then you're allowed to add the CBAS as a, a vector uh, data layer on top of that satellite data. So then when you open a CBAS file, you don't go open CBAS, you, you go to file, then, uh, um, hold on, it's file, then import, Mark. and then vector data, and then CBAS data. So you're specifically telling it that it's going to be CBAS data that you're loading in, so that way it knows that this text file, like what it is, and um, you're loading it in as a layer on top of your satellite data. So that's probably where you go might be going wrong. Is you might be just trying to load it in directly. Yeah, that's a good point because you have to. Uh, if you maybe in the demo we we mentioned this that you have to first load your satellite image then you can add this vector layer on top of that. Question 12 is, I'm doing all the steps that 
the indicated uh, it does not give me any results what could be the reason so if you are try, um, exactly which steps you're talking about you already have satellite images in cdas and then you are trying to add uh, cbas data to it or exactly which steps are not giving you results uh, please let us know specifically question 12 So it could be the symbology. Sometimes it's there, but it, the color is such that it's not showing up in the satellite image. That's possible. Question 13 is I log into CBAS and enter data date range, area of interest, select chlorophyll as product, and when I select results, all data is reset. Mm. I'm not sure if you go through the exercise, there are screenshots given. And if you go through the demo, which you which will be uploaded soon in next 24 to 48 hours, the recording, um, you should be able to see. Uh, question 14, not directly related here, but it says, can we measure water depth of small water bodies using remote sensing? So um, I think the new mission that's coming, SWOT, that should be able to help with that. Um, we, we did reservoir height and bathymetry webinar last year and in our set, and then we will provide a link here so you can visit that. I don't know if the, I don't know if this is relevant to this 14 question, but there is a bathymetry from external sources that can be integrated into uh, CDAS, so yes. you can know how deep the the water actually is where you're analyzing the data. But if you're talking about the satellite itself knowing how deep the water is. Um, it, it can only see as deep as it can see. So there's a there is one uh, product KD490, which is an attenuation of how deep it can see, but that doesn't mean you're seeing to the bottom of the uh, water. So question 15, um, it says that the CBAS file um this should be downloaded and then delete lines um, with dates other than 11th october there are several dates listed in the file can you explain where exactly to delete lines so if you look at the dates in the file in, in the data columns you will or, or different rows are different dates you just want to keep 11th october for now i mean if you keep all the dates you will get those um points in the image because it, it, as long as they're in the file they will go on to image but if you are trying to compare in situ data with satellite data then you want to make sure that at least the dates match if not the time so cut everything which is date other than 11 october that's what the instruction says One, one of the rule of thumbs that CBAS uses um, in a validation step um, um, where, where they're, uh, they're, they're comparing with satellite data in general, they, they like to um, have satellite data within three hours of the um, measurement of the, you know, um, of the in-situ da uh, data measurement, but that all depends on um, your, your own um, 
purposes of studying the water and, and the variabilities of that. But in, in general, that's sort of a, a rule of thumb is a three hour window is what tends to be uh, used is what tends to be called validated data. Whether whether a uh, a station, a sea bass station, is uh, is validated to a particular uh, satellite scene, it, there's uh, several factors that go in. Whether the view angle is okay, whether there's stray light or clouds around, and and uh, and the temporal alignment. Yes, we'll talk a little bit about that next week. But you're very right. Uh, you're right because. Uh, right now, the, we're just focusing on same date, but actually it's the window should be as short around in situ data, plus or minus three hours is what usually is used for either validation or even for development of coefficients. So question 16 is, I added the CBAS data on Moody's 11th October MOSE. But when I went to investigate the reason, how many do you see on the image? Can you explain the difference? I look for the S.SB file and see one row of data. Um, do I make a mistake? I, at least there are four lines, I believe. I can go back and check. Um, so if, if it shows as one point, but if you zoom in, there are at least three points visible. So I'm giving you the answer of the question. And then you can go back and see .sp file, um, how many lines are there? And do you see corresponding points on the image? That is the question. They might want to make sure they downloaded the right SP file as well, because they may have multiple files there, as I was saying about validated files. So there could be, um, a, you know, a similar file that only has one one line in that file because it's only validated file uh, point stations. Um, that's, uh, but my guess is he's got a different file that he's downloaded. Possible. Question 17 is, can we do the same exercise using SNAP software? So I, I have not used SNAP to do this processing, but some of the features are similar in CDAS and SNAP, like both are derived from Beam. Um, so it's possible, but I, we have, I have not used SNAP for this processing. Yeah, th this uh, aspect should be the same. I don't think we've uh, modified anything for SNAP okay. specific to uh, CBAS. Oh, you'll know right away if you get SNAP and, and do um, right. file, um, you know, if, if it has the C, if it accepts the CBAS format, but I believe it does, unless it's something that we added. But in general, as we um, add stuff to CDAS, it gets migrated over to, uh, snap some of the stuff not everything but it's a it's in very close alignment the difference between cdas and snap is mostly um well it it varies as we're going along but it, it's it's sort of the same software at at its yeah. core but cdas comes um, already with the OCSSW installers and some um some modifications and adjustments there are different, but I think this is the same. Hi, thank you. So question 18, so I have installed CDAS uh, in Windows 10 with Python 3.10, but when I run CDAS, it says remote server is down and OCSSW is not accessible. Please start the OCSSW remote server. When I'm trying to configure the OCSSW remote server, it asks for the server address, which I didn't find anywhere. Yeah, so Salvin's been working on that, has spent a lot of time in figuring this out. It does not work directly. You will have to go through uh, Ubuntu, I believe, through a virtual machine. And these steps will be posted very soon, today, tomorrow.
we have also posted this question with ocean color form and um, not sure what the, the solution is here. So best thing would be to use a virtual machine configuration um, and use that on Windows. So um, can you talk a little bit about the pros and cons of CDAS versus SNAP versus GEE? So um, CDAS, I've not used SNAP for the same processing. I've used or I've at least seen detailed demos for using SAR data um, more for on land flood detection. And so uh, if I'm not sure I can, I'm in a position to compare CDAS and SNAP. Um, they should have pretty much very similar uh, features because they both are derived from the same software beam um, versus GEE. So GEE has, if the data are available in GEE, so um, like CBAS data, you would have to upload in GEE as an asset somehow and try and read um, that as a layer with your image. So Modis, Landsat, uh, Modis and Landsat definitely are available in, in GEE. So you don't have to download data. On the other hand, um, the atmospheric correction used, the only top of atmosphere radiances are available in GEE currently from Modis and Landsat. So atmospheric correction, um, whatever you find, is done by USGS um, program or algorithm, not the same that uh, Ocean Biology Group has used for CDAS. So I, I would say that um, for quick looking at uh, something GEE might be useful because data are there and you can quickly kind of look at them. Uh, but if you are trying to compare in situ and satellite data, then you would have to uh, put CBAS data or somehow import that into GEE before you do that. CDAS, on the other hand, can automatically read CBAS formative data. So uh, for algorithm development, um, if you want to use GEE, um, it might handle time sequence part better than CDAS GUI. Um, on the other hand, OCSSW, all the routines that we're going to see next week, those can be run through command line and bulk processing can be done quickly if you're familiar with Python or um, any other programming language um, you, you, on Unix machine or Linux machine, it's easy to run. Um, so both, yeah, I, I would say that um, if you are trying to develop algorithm using CDAS uh, with its various options um, using in, in, in Linux through command line in bulk processing mode would be better to quick checking GEE would be easier, I think. But then you're, you, you just have, um, you don't have options for atmospheric corrections unless you upload your own uh, algorithm and, and incorporate them in. So ease of GEE is that all the data are there, you can quickly clip them to your domain and, and those things are there, you don't have to download anything. Um, so that's the biggest advantage of GEE. So again, depends on what exactly you're trying to do, then you can select the the tool. SNAP, of course, I am not in a position to comment because I've not used SNAP for this processing. So, sort of already said this a little bit, but um, you can consider CDAS and SNAP to be the exact same tool. It's um, being developed. Um, so, sometimes CDAS will get ahead of um, SNAP on certain things, and then th those things will migrate over to SNAP. and um, Vice versa, you can um, install the CDAS toolbox inside of SNAP. Uh, so um, that's, um, there's a few, so I would 
more say that you know that SNAP is tailored towards the um, Sentinel Three community and um, uh, ESA, and the CDAS is more tailored towards the NASA Ocean Color uh, uh, community needs. Um, in but these, you know, our our long term goal is that they're going to be a quite uh, similar you know, as we develop and we're sharing uh, code between uh, the two um, um, softwares so and uh, it's uh, the, the, and when I talk about CDAS and SNAP I'm talking about CDAS the current one eight we, we used to have CDAS uh, seven which was in a similar fashion, um, similar to Beam. So it's an ongoing development of these two uh, softwares where we, we do try to keep, um, when Snap does a release, then we merge in their changes. So it, in general, CDAS will have everything Snap has and a little bit more because we've added stuff. Um, there will be some stuff in SNAP that we don't in CDAS put in there, but you can install it if you want because it, there, there's all these different toolboxes. So, um, you know, if you get SNAP, you'll get some of the ESA toolboxes, which you may not get in CDAS, but you can install it inside CDAS. So, um, don't worry too much about the differences. You can kind of consider them as the, the ultimately sort of the same software, just tailored differently. Thank you. So, hold on, let me go over to the next question is C, CBAS has little information on in situ data of the arabian sea is there another source of in situ data so i quickly went through and checked uh, there are there are data um, in arabian sea if you just go and draw a box around the region of interest in arabian sea uh, you should be able to have some data because if i if i cover um huge part of Arabian Sea, Persian Gulf, everything, uh, then I do get almost 155 sea bass files. And so um, if you draw a small box around the region of your interest, and I search for chlorophyll, and there are at least 20 files very close to the coastal Arabian Sea near Indian West Coast. How do I install update OCSW manually on Windows? So that instruction will be coming soon. Um, this is question 21. Question 22. When I try to add the landmass, it is not loading and CDAS is not responding. Any suggestions? Um, not sure if you once you choose a color and create mask if you click on create mask hopefully it will create and respond so you click on the land mask a symbol and then there are multiple there is water there's coast and land mask you go to land Select the cover and then say create mask at the bottom. And then it will hopefully create the mask. Depending on the speed of your machine and the size of the file you have loaded, maybe you have some RAM issues. Mm -hmm. You can always try, there's a tool called crop. You could take your image, your uh, loaded satellite data and zoom in and crop it so it's small and then try to put the um, land mask on that that way you can at least roll out whether it's uh, computer um, RAM issues or something else 
so for your information in our first webinar which we did a couple of months ago we we demonstrated the crop feature so you can go back and review that if you want to crop an image in CDAS. Uh, question 23 can i import ocean model data chlorophyll indeed after regreeding and compare with satellite imagery I believe you can put it in CBAS format. Or can you add um, any, if it's a NetCDF file, I believe it, you should be able to open it in CDAS. Right, Danny? Yeah. Yeah. As a raster, yes. So you can uh, get ocean model data in, into that. Question 24 is where can I get these standard SPM satellite products like Aqua, Modis, Corfield A products? Uh, I don't think there is standard SPM product available um, from sat satellite derived. There are originally, there are papers, uh, published papers you will see where people have in situ SPM measurements and they derive their own algorithm to get satellite based SPM. But SPM from satellite is not available through NASA OBPG site. So uh, question 25 is, can you please repeat the data name for bathymetry for Q question 14? So in CBAS, it is inbuilt, and I'm sure we should be able to get your name of that file, um, that the metadata. There's also a tool in CDAS called bathymetry that yeah. you run and you, it looks like an ocean wave at the top of the icon and you click on that and that will create uh, bathymetry and topography uh, bands and a mask that you can use. Yeah, I will uh, will share my screen, um, if not today, maybe next time, just to show where the bathymetry option is. If you go to CDAS, as Daniel said, on top, next to the landmass, you will see this wave, ocean wave kind of symbol. That's where you can uh, access bathymetry data. Question 26 is OCSSW is not working on Windows operating system. I think um, we're working on that and should be available soon. I can't enter the CBAS page, question 27. Apparently they are blocking all requests from this network because from other network, if we can. Um, I'm not sure. It's an open source data, and if you if you log in with NASA Earth Data credentials, it should let you in. I'm not sure why the um, this IP address is blocked. I'm not sure. Yeah, and CBAS could be experiencing some issues. So yes, um, the date and time mentioned as 2009-02-10 
that's where it so it's 2009 uh, February 10th that's what it is So thank you everyone for attending today's session. Hopefully uh, you can work on exercise one and finish that before next week. Next week, um, we will be working with OCSSW, but considering the difficulties uh, Windows machine are having right now, we might shorten that part and work more with um, already derived data, or we will provide process data for you to work with. So, um, Hope to see you next week. Um, and um, we really want to thank the CBAS team for their help, especially Daniel Knowles and Bing Yang. They have been very helpful. Daniel has also been a guest speaker with us earlier about CDAS. So thank you both for attending this webinar and helping us with all the questions and answer. Um, and then we, on behalf of my colleague, Sean McCartney, um, I want to thank Salvin Hudson Odoi for his effort in putting OCSSW and CDAS for Windows steps together um, and team that helps us organizing the webinar, our set team that Brock Levin, Sarah Cashel, and Jonathan O'Brien. Um, and we also want to thank our colleague Juan Torres Perez. Um, he also is part of this team uh, working with uh, Ocean. Um, biology so it's a team effort and we thank you for attending today's session uh, we hope to see you on 7th december same time thank you <laughs>